There we go. Thank you, Zay Rob. Just the most important show of my career, and I was muted for the first minute and a half. Anyway, we'll recap it, but you already know why we're here. Pete Thamel reporting. Baylor's Dave Aranda will return to coach the Bears in 2024. Nine and 16 since that 2021 season. Three and nine finish this year, and 23 and 23 overall, if I'm not mistaken, as the Baylor head coach. And part of it saying the the return will come with significant changes on and off the field as they are expected to be staff changes and an uptick in Baylor's NIL investment. Now, the case for optimism pushing forward includes a talented core of young players. Baylor played the most freshmen in the Big 12 in 2023, with 24 true and redshirt freshmen playing nearly 4,500 snaps. So, I got to say, I, it wasn't. it's not the most surprising thing I've ever heard, but what we saw last night and even the news that came out today – I am stunned. I am stunned they're sticking with him. I, I just, I I don't, but we'll get to the upside. I just don't see much of an upside, upside of not just having a clean break and starting over with the resources that you have here at Baylor. It, it's just gone south so quick, and it's gone south because they have not been able to adapt to the changing college football landscape. Dave talked about it last night of, we didn't hit the portal quick enough in 2021. So, I mean, barely at all in 2021 after winning the Sugar Bowl. Took just none of the momentum that they had with the most wins ever in a season for Baylor. And it not all the portal moves worked this year either. Keytron Jackson showed some flashes. The Barrington brothers were the focal point of a terrible offensive line. And the the part about staff changes is what really surprises me because how many how many opportunities do we give him to change the staff? Offensive coordinator gone, defensive coordinator gone. Okay, he's already done that. He's already brought in his own guys and fired the guys he brought in to start and then hired more of his own guys. So what what is going to be the change here? You're going to just keep the figurehead of this three and nine season and have him bring in a whole nother staff and they're just going to rally around him in year one. I I just don't see it. I don't see it at all. And, and Jeff in the comments here, kind of thinking the same thing that I was on the NIL. NIL, he says NIL won't help this team. They need a fresh start. I agree with half of that. NIL will help this program. I don't know how much it's going to help the 2024 team. I, I don't, that that's a, that's a long-term thing that Baylor is already behind in and they need to get better at that for the long term. In the short term, I, I don't think Baylor is just going to be money bags and Dave Aranda is just going to figure it out in the next couple months to, to bring in the best prospects possible with this great NIL collective. I know basketball does really well with it. Football has not, and it's not something you just change overnight in one offseason. And to be quite honest, this would be one thing if we knew he was a dynamite head coach. But the jury is out on that, to put it lightly. Again, what I can't take away what he did in 2021. I know it was Matt Rule's guys, but he did things with them that Matt Rule never did. They never beat a ranked team. They didn't win the conference championship. They didn't win the Sugar Bowl. Dave did all of those things. Absolutely. You have to give him credit for that. But since it's been all his locker room, on the coaching staff, on the player development staff, and the players, they have sucked. They have not had a winning season yet. And that's three losing seasons in four years. And what Mac Rhodes is saying is, that's okay for us. Houston moves to a Power 5 conference. Houston, University of Houston, who you should be a better football program than. They have an experienced head coach. They go into the Power 5. They go 4-8 and eight the first year, 5-7, and seven, whatever it was. And they say, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. And A&M didn't hire probably the best kind of coach for, for these kind of programs in Texas, like Houston and Baylor and, and UTSA's Jeff Trailer. They're going to go after him. Baylor on the other hand, two years removed from winning the very conference that we're talking about, says, no, you know what? That's good enough for us. That's good enough. We'll run this thing back. That, that to me, is such a slap in the face 
for the fan base. Such a slap in the face. They looked around this stadium that was maybe 20% full last night, and they absolutely choked the game away against West Virginia to go 3-9, and nine, and they said, let's run this thing back. That's embarrassing. That's so embarrassing. Trevor in the comments says, or asks, do you think this is a Baylor decision or a booster decision? Just from what we see in, in discourse online and, and the people that I know who give money to this program, this was an athletics department decision. Not, absolutely not a booster decision. Not in the slightest. They have been clamoring. A, a lot of the, the people that are giving money to this program have been clamoring for Aranda to be gone or for something major to change since week one of this season when losing to Texas State. And instead, we watched it go from bad to worse and bottom out at three and nine. One miraculous comeback away from being two and 10 and going 0 and seven against FBS teams at home. And they think that that's okay. That's okay. I, I just, I don't, I don't get it. I really don't. Dylan asked, does Trailer go to Houston now? I think so. I think from Houston's standpoint, that's what they want. I, I should say that. I talked about the Trailer kind of lineage a lot um, throughout the last couple of weeks. And I think what some people do forget is he was Tech's number one choice in 2021 when they went with, Joey McGuire instead. He turned down tech and took a lucrative contract extension at UTSA to get a lot of money in his pocket. And I think, which was a good call of saying, Hey, I got UTSA into, you know, into the top 25 this year. We got a good core. We can do that again. And if I do that another year or two, then I'm going to get a much better job offer than Texas tech. And it looked like that was going to be the case with Texas A&M and he obviously did go an interview there and looks like <laughs> as we record this at two o'clock on Sunday afternoon, Mark Stoops is still the guy they're going with, although the players don't like it. Uh, we've seen that before. Um, and so I think Houston will go after him, but I, I say all that backstory to say, I don't know if that's a big enough job in trailer's mind, but the time's kind of running out on trailer, you know, not in a bad way, but he's 55. He's got to make a big move soon or else you you risk having a subpar season at UTSA, and then you're on nobody's shortlist again. So, um, interesting thought. I think I think that's Houston's standpoint. They saw last night, they were probably on the fence. Um, I know the fans were about firing Dana Holgerson, and they saw last night that Trailer wasn't going to A&M, and they swooped right in. So, um, good on them. Jeff says, I think Aranda must have the right politics. They align with Linda and Mac. Only thing I can think to... Think of as to the why. I, I don't know exactly who he votes for, but I think I know what you mean. Um, he mentioned it in his post game press conference last night. Dave did that. This he wants to succeed here so bad because he thinks this is a great fit, and this is something he's talked about in the past. Of you know, he's had some big coordinator jobs. Wisconsin and LSU were the two before coming to Baylor, and he was basically saying in some interviews that. I wasn't the person I wanted to be. The, my kids didn't recognize me. I wasn't around ever. I was I was bitter and, and angry all the time because of the big business of college, of college football. And I think I get the right support here at Baylor to run the program the way I want. And I think we can still succeed. And that was great at the beginning of 2022 because it looked like he was right. But 9 and 16 since then, I don't think that's right. I the proof is in the pudding. What you guys would be laughing at me if I told you it's working. It's clearly not. But he's, I mean, yeah, he's he's quiet. He doesn't make headlines. Um, he does really love his players um, and treats them well. He appreciates every question. He treats the media really well. That's why it's tough for us to to bring up the obvious sometimes about the job he's been doing the last two years. So. I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I think they do really like him. Um, and last night after, so Mac, Mac Rhodes is always in on the post-game pressers and, and Linda Livingstone, the Baylor president, usually is too. And right after Dave got off the podium to end the thing, he went straight up to her and it was a very quick conversation. And she just said, yep, yep, okay. 
which to me was like a, hey, we got to meet tomorrow. And we got to make a final decision on this. And they have made that final decision. They have clearly been big backers of Aranda. They, they uh, made that no secret. But with a school like Baylor, I think especially Dr. Livingstone, the Baylor president, really needs to tread lightly here. Because when you're a school like Baylor, you're not a big state school. Your front door to the nation is your football team, whether you like it or not. You know, you think Northwestern likes it. They're one of the top private schools in the nation, but that's the way it is. People know you because they see you on TV winning football games. Does Cal need that? No. They're the University of California. They don't need that. Baylor does. And this thing could sink like a freaking stone if it's going the way it's been going the last two seasons, specifically the last season and a half, where, I mean, it's obvious they can't win home games. They can't beat anybody. They can't beat anybody. And so this is, this is a huge decision for the university and the athletic department, not just the football team. And so I, the silver lining is, yes, they had a lot of talented young players out there this year, but the way they coached them up and the way these teams were not ready for games week after week after week after week, I don't see this getting better. I wish I'd be wrong. I wish I could see the light that Mac Rhodes and Linda Livingstone are seeing. I don't see it. Steven says, if it's true that we're getting new coordinators on both sides of the ball, who will they be? Great question. So let's just assume, even though it's Matt Powell's first season and he's a random guy, let's just assume by these comments that it will be both of them that are gone. Look, Dana Holgerson's available. <laughs> I don't know, Cliff Kingsbury can lure him away from what, what was he, an analyst at, at USC? Lure him away? I don't know. Gary Patterson is defensive coordinator. Bring it on. I have no idea. That's going to be a, probably a show for another day, Stephen. Um, I'd love to look more into that. And, and see what that is. Cameron Phillips says, no one is going to come to any games next year. Good point, Cameron. They didn't come this year. <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're right. It's going to be, we're going to have full bowl pictures of McLean Stadium, half full quite a bit next year. Trevor, who do you think we're going to lose player-wise through the transfer portal? There's more talent on the roster than the record shows, and I feel some are going to play that better suits them. I'm going to go play to somewhere that better suits them. Yeah, I did a, an episode on this last week, Trevor. Highly recommend checking it out. Um, I did the top five uh, transfer portal candidates. I believe it was off the top of my head, Armani Winfield, Devin Bobby, Alfonso Allen, um, Richard Reese, <laughs> and and uh, Drake Dabney, who Drake Dabney did not take part in senior day festivities yesterday, which you would usually do even as a senior if you're still on the fence about transferring. Uh, so him not doing it shows me that he probably will be here next year. Um, so that's that's great for Baylor. I just think he's going to have some NFL draft stock, um, and I would have thought he would have gone somewhere where an offense could utilize him a little bit more. Um, but we'll see. That now goes up in the air because tight ends are focal points in Jeff Grimes' offense. And by what we've heard today, is Jeff Grimes going to be there next year? I don't know. So those are the guys just off the top of my head. Um, there will be some guys that that we haven't heard of um, that will enter the transfer portal as well. But this has been a steady flow the last two seasons of guys entering the transfer portal. Wouldn't be surprised to see Hal Presley go in the portal either. Um, he's one who's already transferred before, came in from Auburn, um, who had his season cut short this year. We'll see. It kind of all depends on who those coordinators are that come in that you should see here in the next month or so, probably by the the beef of bowl season is when you'll at least hear some names or or get a better indication of of what that could be. Avery says, we're too low on the carousel totem pole to find a better quality coach than Aranda this year. That's BS, man, or woman. That's, that's a bunch of crap. I'm sorry. There's no reason that Baylor can't lure in Jeff Trailer, who is a better coach than Dave Aranda. Miss me with that crap. You know, we can't, we can't play poverty. We can't do that. And I know it's, it's bad this year. It's, it's really bad. Um, 
But what we've seen over the last decade is this team can go and compete every four-year cycle. They can be in a conference championship game, if not winning the conference championship, and going to the major bowl games and finishing in the top five like they did in 2021 and in the top 10 a few times before that. So, no, I, I don't I don't think that's right. Admeister says, screw the portal. We should accept defeat in the new college football landscape. I don't know what that means. It sounds like Dave Aranda in January of 2022. I, okay, you can't just not play the portal. That's what you saw this year. So you'd be just asking for more three and nines, no matter who the coach is, if you don't play the portal. So, yeah. And then Admeister also says, I know what's going to happen. No quality players will come to Baylor because we won't pay for them, nor do I think we should. Then then go go root for Tufts or Bowden and get in the NESCAC in Division Three, Admeister. That's not how the game is played anymore. That's not, this is not 1965. That's not how we do it. That's not, nobody with that mindset is winning football games right now. Golly. And Zachary agrees with me. Thank you, Zachary. Nonsense. Baylor could have found an excellent coach this year. Chadwell and Trailer would have come. Absolutely. Absolutely. They would have come. There's the Baylor is not, you know, they're not Chadron State. They can get guys to come here. They're not even Northwestern, which is going to a bowl game, by the way, and has had a pretty good program over the last 10 years. So, no, they absolutely could have brought in um, a dynamite coach. You know, they weren't going to bring in Dabo. They weren't going to have the same names as A&M had with Dabo Sweeney and Ryan Day, and, you know, maybe they couldn't even get a Mark Stoops. But they absolutely could have bought, could have brought someone in. What else we got here? Thank you. Thank you, Scotty. Appreciate that. Avery comes back and tries to amend the comment, it looks like. What I meant by is that AM and Houston are open and we'll be bringing in new staff, so it will be tough to find recruiters who get Texas. That's a that's a different argument, Avery. That's a much different argument. And that is, I think, a thought process of a lot of Baylor fans this morning when you saw that UH was moving on from Holgerson. It was A, a program in your conference right now that's comparable to you is not accepting this kind of failure. That's the first part. And then the second part is, again, a program that is going to offer the resources comparable to what you can offer in a, in a big, a major Power 5 conference is also looking for a coach. And that's why I was, I was terrified they were going um, to bring in Jeff Traylor. Um, and that Baylor would miss out, but Baylor's going to miss out anyway. And Zachary says, Houston is a much worse job than Baylor. All caps, much worse. I wish I could agree with you, Zach. I really do. I think Baylor's a better job, um, and it's a it's a better overall space for college athletics than the University of Houston is. But right now, I can't say that with any, um, with any definitiveness. Baylor's had the success that Houston hasn't really had, especially over the last decade. Now, in that time, Houston did make a New Year's Six Bowl and win it. Um, but but I think right now, the difference of four and eight and three and nine and a very similar trajectory, I can't say that Baylor's that much better. I wish I could. I wish I could. Joseph asks, Blake at QB1 next year still, right? Bet on it. Yep. Nothing to show that he wouldn't be QB1. Um, I guess there is the you run the risk of, someone coming in and doing the run and shoot and Blake transfers and they want Sawyer Robertson, but I doubt it. Um, I think Blake will be the quarterback next year. Tyler says, move Aranda to head coach slash defensive coordinator, Powledge as position coach, get an OC that has Texas ties and recruits well, throw money at NIL to get quality transfers. It can get better, but correct moves need to be made. Um, I don't know if Aranda can... I don't know that Aranda can run the team as the head coach. I don't want him having double duty, to be quite honest with you. Um, and I don't put too much on Powell's plate because it is season one, but this was an atrocious, atrocious defense this year. And Powell's came in because he is an Aranda guy and has coached under him before. So it is the, the Aranda defensive philosophy that's out there. And it stunk this year. And it wasn't very good last year either, to be quite honest. And throw NIL to get quality transfers. You got to. You got to. Like I said earlier, it, it's there's only so much you can do in one offseason with NIL and with the transfer portal, especially. Um, you, 
the money is not just falling off of trees for Baylor or earn any NIL collective, to be honest with you. That's why it's a collective. It's the schools have whole departments for this to get these businesses and these brands together to make sure they are getting raising the money and then allocating it over years. So they might well be doing that, but it's just not something that you can do make a huge difference with in one year. So I, I hope I'm wrong on that one as well, but I just don't see I think if Aranda does a good job laying the seeds for NIL, it's going to really benefit the next head coach more than it's going to benefit him. Cameron asks, do you think Shapin and Reese return next year? I think that came before talking about Shapin a few questions ago. I think Shapin does return. Richard Reese, I don't think so. He had an awesome night last night to kick off returns for touchdowns and was the leading rusher on the team, but hadn't got much use over the last month and really most of the season. After being a freshman All American next year, I think he's got some some big programs that have that have hit his line in the last couple of weeks to see if he's interested in going somewhere else. Just the gut feeling. I have no inside source on that. I hope he comes back. He's a I think he's still a good football player and he's a really good kid. Uh, but no, I don't I don't think I don't think he will be back. BU maybe this is coming directly from Baylor says Aranda will not make it to the end of the season next season. If you had to ask me right now, I definitely agree with you. Uh, for it, It's interesting that Dave Aranda pointed out last night, he talked to Neil Brown, obviously the West Virginia coach, after the game, and Neil told him, man, this, this sucks for you, Dave, and I'm sorry. I went through this same thing. You're going you're gonna to come out kicking butt after that, um, and it's going to feel great. And that is true in some sense. Neil Brown went through that. He was 4-8 and eight last year, 8-4 and four this year. West Virginia couldn't afford the buyout. They stuck with him another year, and it worked. And that is the silver lining. That is the positivity for Baylor fans to look at. Look at that Neil Brown, West Virginia situation. That said, for each one of those, there are four or five Scott Frost. Scott Frost was fired at Nebraska like three straight seasons. They brought him back for another one, canned him at the end of September, and their whole season was down the drain again. I don't think he ever made a bowl game for Nebraska. So, that's that's kind of the risk you run is even if a new head coach starts slowly next year, you're probably in a better position than an unproven slash bad head coach getting fired in September and you're punting the whole season. So, yeah. Ryan says, how is a three-quarters empty stadium signs that things are okay? Mac is really pushing his chips all in with this. Kind of scary as a guy who loves Baylor football. Don't want it to be irrelevant. That is what it's headed towards, Ryan. It is it is plunging down to irrelevancy. Um, and that's that's my biggest fear in this, is that Baylor is going to become Maryland, Illinois, Cal, without being a state school. <laughs> They're... They're just going to be also rands. Indiana is another one that comes to mind. Oregon State was that way for years. They're on a pretty good heater right now. Um, Vanderbilt, Mississippi State, teams that just exist. South Carolina, Boston College, Georgia Tech, although they're going to a bowl game this year. Teams that Virginia, that just exist. They're just there. They have a football team, but you wouldn't know it. And I think that's what they're headed towards. And... This is, a, this is a huge, huge call in Mac Rhodes' career. Um, I think he wasn't necessarily making a decision for his job as we stand here at the end of November in 2023 because I think he's done a pretty good job outside of football. And again, this hire, this hire was a, a great one at the time. It was a slam dunk, um, but it didn't work out. And I think no one would have blamed him slash there would have been no real heat on the athletic department if they can Dave Aranda after this. No one was saying, oh, give this guy another chance. So that's what surprises me the most is he's actually kind of taking the high road here and hitching his wagon to Dave Aranda. After what we see, I mean, two years of chaotic Big 12 football with this year being straight up bad Big 12 football and they couldn't have a winning record, neither of them. The conference is only going to get better, even with Texas and Oklahoma leaving. The competition of this conference is going to get better. The newcomers are going to get better, especially one that just fired their subpar head coach. So yeah, 
That's what this is going towards. Baylor is going to become an irrelevant football program. Just irrelevant. Mm. Ryan says, honestly curious, who is supporting NIL changes amid this catastrophe? Great question. <laughs> Great question. It was a struggle for Baylor to seemingly a struggle for Baylor to raise NIL funds and create a great NIL collective even before this. Um, but I mean, just look at the stands, man. Who Who's giving their money to this football program right now? Especially after this, especially after this decision. I don't know. It's a great question. Hmm. I think the next logical question, this is from Trevor. I think the next logical question is what a successful off season is or looks like. Um, that's a great question. They will still have to hit the portal hard. I mean, um, you know, I, I don't think it's the, the band aid that covers all these wounds, but a successful off season would be um, hitting the portal hard and bringing in coordinators that people know Um which, look, that's not always the fix either, right? We all knew who Larry Fedora was. He was the head coach of Carolina, and he came in and was just – he ran a brain-dead offense. So it's not always the end-all be-all, but at least that will bring some excitement and keep talented players who are on the fence in your program. So I think that's, that's what it looks like. Gary Clark says, no one wants to pay off an expensive contract and hire a new expensive coach at the same time. That's correct. That's correct. And A and M is going to do that, and I know it's—I absolutely not—I know it's not the same financial situation as Baylor. But the alternative, Gary, is to keep paying an expensive contract, not a buyout, but an expensive contract. Dave gets paid pretty handsomely and suck. So I would rather maybe play the game of, hey, let's bring in a coach who we think is going to be better, and yes, we're going to have to pay him handsomely, and maybe have a chance at being good versus retaining a coach that leaves you almost no chance to be good, at least for next season. Hmm, what do we got? What is the win total Aranda has to get next year? Will anyone be okay with six in year five? That is, I think, a really interesting point about this. Not just the offseason, but what next season has to look like. If they go six and six, is that good enough? I would say no. I would say no. It's better than what it was this year, and that would be a three-game improvement is nothing to scoff at most of the time, but no, because then you're just middling in mediocrity and you're spending millions of dollars. You you gave this huge contract extension for a coach that should get you to, in, in the top 25, competing for Big 12 championships, competing for New Year's Six Bowls. That's why you pay the guy. And if you're going to be paying him to get better, but still go six and six, I don't think that's good enough. I, I don't think that's good enough either. Dylan says, what a horrible time to not be good for Baylor, and especially a time of monumental landscape changes in the Big 12. Yeah, you're right. I mean, again, it, it's, been a, it's been not a good conference the last two years. Last year was a little bit better. There was some quality, and everybody was beating each other. But this year, it was pretty heavy at the top. Pretty darn heavy at the top. And your best team, far and away, the Texas Longhorns, I think if they play the Alabama Crimson Tide again, we'll get pummeled and we will see exactly where the Big 12 is at once again, that your best team is not a playoff team and will get slaughtered, I think, by an SEC team. We do have a descender here. Ryan N., I got faith in Aranda. Two best games every wise this year, I don't know what that means, were Utah and West Virginia and both had Sawyer at quarterback. I like the future with Sawyer and the running back room, plus lots of players will get older and better. On paper, that is correct. Sawyer was the quarterback in both those games. I would urge you to look at the numbers that Sawyer had in those two games because it was vastly, vastly different. He was excellent on Saturday night against West Virginia. He was not that against Utah. Utah could not move the ball at all. That was much more an anomaly for Utah than it was a a reason that Baylor could hang with the big boys. Not the case. I, I don't think that's right. Um, and again, I do think Shapin is your quarterback this year. Uh, next year, he's not. he was not the problem this year. The defense was the problem. So by saying you have faith in Aranda and saying that your two best games, both losses, by the way, were with the backup at quarterback under center, 
then what does that say about Aranda? Then that means you're telling me that he was starting the wrong guy the rest of the season. So where's the faith coming from? That seems like a bit of a... I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Scotty says, how about 15 to 30 transfer portal guys in terms of numbers of players to get? I think that would be good. I think that's what you would need to get at. We're seeing this year specifically, it kind of went off the deep end, the lucrative numbers of players hitting the transfer portal and joining new teams and making instant impacts. We saw it in week one with Texas state. Um, they have hit a skid, but they're going to a bowl game. We saw it instantly with Colorado and it dipped the other direction. So um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see a number between 15 and 30 coming in here to Baylor. And I hope it works out better than it did at Colorado. Scotty also says offensive line and defensive line needs to be addressed. Yeah. D line kind of gets, kind of gets lost to the shuffle here because of how bad the offensive line was this year in the back half of last year. Um, just terrible offensive line this year. But um, yeah, defensive line came into the 2022 season as the big strength for Baylor. Great pass rush and, and run stuff the year before. And you lost one or two of those guys, but you added a guy like Jackson Player. You kept Gabe Hall, who's this great freak. And he did play better the last couple games of this season, but it was totally a non-factor. You could run all over them. They didn't get sacks. They didn't get in the backfield. Both of those things. If you're if you are going to lose in the trenches before you even hit the field, you're going to lose a lot of football games, and that's what we saw this year. Cameron asks, "Why does basketball recruit so well, but football doesn't know how?" <laughs> totally different ball game, Cameron. Totally different ball game. The big thing is Baylor basketball has a national championship banner hanging in the rafters at the Farrell Center, and it is much more attainable for Baylor as a school to win a national championship in basketball than it is in football. I don't know that they ever will in football. So Brendan says, how does the offensive line need to improve? Hmm, good question, Brendan. I think they need to block the other guys a lot better. Yeah. Because if that wasn't tongue in cheek, I, I would say you probably haven't watched the game this year. They were terrible. They were terrible. I mean, Blake got hurt twice because the, the offensive line can't protect him. They had to pull him from a game because his head coach told him, we can't keep you protected out there. So, no. Drake C. Troll says, Baylor won't fire Dave Rand in the middle of the next season. As we've seen, this athletic department is committed to kindness over winning. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, I think the, and I guess to back up your point here, I was going to say the only thing that would keep me from, from saying that is, Mac will have his job on the line if he doesn't fire him next September and they're one and four. But the person who fires him is the university president. And she is as much a as much a part of this coaching thing as as Mac Rhodes is, the athletic director. So yeah, it's a good point. I don't know. Oh, is this true? Zach, are you true with me? I gotta look this up. Zach just says per ESPN, Powledge and Grimes were just fired. Oh boy, I gotta see this. Sorry, I've been live with you guys, so I don't know. Mike Craven, who's really good. Sources, Dave Aranda to take over play calling on defense, replaced Jeff Grimes with offensive coordinator with head coaching experience and an explosive style. Jeff Grimes and Matt Powledge will not return from Adam Rittenberg. There you go. Didn't waste any time with that. Um, and Steven had that as well. Thank you guys for, for putting that in the chat. I would have totally missed it uh, until I logged off of this. That's an interesting point. I love the, the quote in here from Mike Craven, or he's quoting someone else. Look for a new offensive coordinator with, quote, head coaching experience and an explosive style, end quote. You remember the name I brought up earlier? Dana Holgerson's looking for a job. One-year rehab at Baylor? I think so. I think that could work. Maybe his pride's too big. He is a head coach. He's been a head coach for 15 years now almost. Um, before you guys get in the GD comment saying this, it's not going to be Art Bryles. It is not going to be Art Bryles. It's not funny. It's not cheeky. And I think most of you aren't even trying to be funny. You believe it. It's not going to be Art Bryles. So Matt Pallage and Jeff Grimes gone. Pallage after one season. So now Dave will get a crack at his third coordinator at each of those. Unless, like that report says, he does do the defensive play calling himself. I don't know if that's a decision you make in November, by the way. Um, so, yes, I already have one. We need Bryles back. That's just not going to friggin' happen. Just don't, just stop. Just stop. 
We will see how many of the freshmen and sophomores enter the portal. I think you'll see a mass exodus. Yeah, um, but the but the one of the points they made on keeping Aranda was that that young core, and I think there's something to that. I think um, I think there is a, a young and talented core, and they could be the foundation of another conference championship in the years to come here. So I wanted to take Dave Aranda's answer about that in in last night's press conference. Eric Kelly said from uh, Fox 44 here in Waco asked, why would fans be confident if you were at the helm next year? What is going to give them that confidence? Now I did speech to text here, um, but this is what Dave said. There's a great group of freshmen, sophomore players, very talented, and we're working really hard on on retaining them. I just think with the ability and the talent that they have right now, they're being recruited. And so, you know, all of our process has been kind of undertaking the last two months. And so we're still kind of into that. I love reading Dave word for word. I think the connections with them and the, with their coaches and the rest of the team and their connection with me are all going to be a part of it. I just think that nowadays you're going to end up losing guys and guys are going to move on. And I think that's just part of what it is. And so I just think we've got to build the guys up that we really want playing here and that want to be here and all of our guys that we want, that we're going to fight really hard to keep them. And so I think there's a lot of positive with that. I think the facility that Baylor is going to move into is another huge positive. And he kind of goes on talking about the facility, but um, yeah, that's, this is going to be kind of the interesting thing about the next month. And you'll start seeing guys make announcements in the, in the next week here um, about what that's going to be. Ryan says Mateo should be fired as well by now. Yeah. If it hasn't been reported, I'm sure he's been told that. Uh, I said that last night that no matter what decision you go, even if you keep all your coordinators, Eric Mateos needs to go. This was such a step back on the offensive line and you cannot build the foundation of a team with an offensive line like that. It was, it was terrible. And once he was able to get the guys in that he recruited after 2021, it went major downhill. Um, and you're, you're seeing that now. So that sucks. So Baylor sticking with Dave Aranda. Let me know in the comments if you're listening to this later what you think about that. Is is this going to lead the program into free fall? I think with a school like Baylor that is not a blue blood but has the resources to win fairly consistently, any decision like this is not a one-year hiccup. What would, what would be one year at other schools is like a three-year hiccup for Baylor. I look at the Scott Frost situation at Nebraska. Matt Rule had them one game within a bowl game this year in year one, much better than the year one he had at Baylor and or Temple. And so to me, that is a one-year hiccup. They should be in a bowl game next year for the first time in seven years. So for a program like that, it is a one-year hiccup. UCLA just got blown out by Cal. If they fire Chip Kelly, that'll probably be a one-year hiccup if you make the right call, if you make the right hire. At Baylor, even if you make the right hire, that could be a three-year hiccup. BU, why should fans be confident? Aranda, quote, I appreciate that question. He did start with that. He did start with that. He appreciated the question. He actually said that twice on that answer, at the beginning and at the end, bookends of appreciating that question. It's it's kind of all or nothing next year. And I think it's got to be like a, a seven or eight win season. And that's a huge jump in Power 5. That's a big jump from year to year. But I think it's got to be that to really get the fans on board. Because you're losing them. You're losing this fan base, man. If you haven't already, this is going to do, do huge damage to it. And I hate seeing that. Tyler says Coach Orgeron. I think he's referring to Parker Orgeron, Ed Orgeron's son and analyst for Baylor. Or maybe more likely he's talking about Ed Orgeron. Sorry, Tyler, your head coach is going to be Dave Aranda. So, and Scotty agrees with me here. Mac Rhodes has been, only been off on the Dave Aranda hire. Everyone else has, uh, has hired is in year two or three. Women's soccer head coach took a step forward. Yes, I think he's, I think he's been good on every other hire. And I know there are going to be people in the comments saying, Oh, they let Kim Mulkey go. It's women's basketball, man. I like it, but you just can't you can't put as much into women's basketball as Kim Mulkey wanted and still be successful at the highest level in football and in men's basketball. So 
So he let Kim Mulkey go, sure, but he got a dynamite replacement who is building a top 10 team right now, a team that's going to be in the top 10 this year. So anyway, I, I agree, Scotty. I think Mac Rhodes has been pretty good, but this could make or break his tenure at Baylor. If it's a disaster and you have to get rid of Dave Aranda next year, you could well see Mac Rhodes go with the ship. Whether that's fair or not, it doesn't matter how good you are in men's basketball, in baseball, in tennis, in soccer, softball, none of that. If you suck at football, especially at a Texas school, that's not good enough. You can't be the front door of this university if you suck at football. No way, no how. And so that's, that's, that is what the problem is here, is football is such a big thing, obviously everywhere in revenue, but for exposure for Baylor. And I think this thing's going to sink like a stone. I wish I was wrong because I really like Dave as a person. He's a super nice guy, and I think there's a lot of great football acumen in there. He's a great defensive coordinator, and as I've said this season, I think whenever his time is up as Baylor head coach, He'll be a dynamite defensive coordinator and a heck of a head coach again somewhere. I just don't think it's going to be here. We're going to have more throughout the week about what this means for Baylor and what could have gone into this decision for Mac Rhodes and what the expectations need to be next year for Dave Aranda to finish the season as Baylor's head coach. Thanks for joining on this emergency pod. Again, let me know down in the comments what you think. Be sure to like and subscribe. This is your only only source, not directly from Baylor University, that is giving you only Baylor athletics five days a week. Um, and on weeks like this, it's seven days a week. Uh, it's basketball season, so we'll keep you up to date with that mostly. But of course, what is this going to mean for Baylor football and the athletic department as a whole as we go forward? Thanks again. This is going to be Locked on Baylor.